touch them in a special way. And when he visited Cuba in 1980, the uh, Cuba dictator Fidel Castro freed about 300 political prisoners, and uh, he also allowed people to celebrate that. This is is it all right to take a picture in here, or I'm going to sure, shut this yes, off yes, now? You Are you can. sure? Yeah. Yes. Okay. You can put it on video, Ken. All right. I have it on video. Oh, yeah. okay. And then uh, I just want to double check before I get any further in here. Yeah, you are. Okay, so this is our paper in Puerto Cerrito's room. If you see a timeline on the top of you right here, we have um, the different, the five major partitions that Poland has been through, starting with uh, 1000 AD all the way to 1995. So in the, the pink, you see the, the size. Poland was pretty small. Then it got pretty big by the conqueror that you know that took over the land. And then in, in 1795 AD, you see how Poland almost disappeared from the map. Uh, it was divided by uh, the Austrian Empire, Prussia, and the Russian Empire. And then so we have to see, we get to see by the visual uh, how Poland has changed. So. Right. And then here we have a small timeline of some of the other things that Poland has gone through. Um, and if you want down here, we have a beautiful statue of John Paul II's uh, parents. Okay. Um, as we know, his dad was an army officer, and his mom died when he was a pretty young child. And as we walk along this paper in Polish heritage room, we're going to see a display of photographs, uh, a lot of them not seen by too many mm -hmm. uh, people outside of the, the John Paul II Center, and we can see different faces of John Paul II. Here we have John Paul II uh, about age one, here we have him at about age 11, and here we have um, Carl Wotiva, from second from the left in his par uh, with his parish priest. Another thing that too many people don't know is that John Paul II also uh, here we have him in a military uniform in 1939. Could you spot him out? Okay, let me see. Try. Mm -hmm. Always look for the round face. Yeah, you know, I was going right yes, there. Yes, that's it. Okay. That is him. Yeah. Oh, really? And, uh, yeah, good I, for I you. I can see Pope John Paul II. Right you can there. see him right yeah. there. And another uh, picture hmm. that I really love is this one right here where you see Pope past the first test. Past the first test. <laughs> You see Pope John Paul II with the youth. He, he was a magnet to attracting the youth. And here we have him in this beautiful serene setting with a river in the background. And you see him yeah, just relaxing. He got his shades on. Yeah. That's not something you see every day on a Pope doing. <laughs> you got to see this. I will. So, look at That's great. He just looks so happy. That's and, great. Uh, and you see the... And then this is it's a testament of why the youth was attracted to him yes. so much. Was he also... Did he train... To be an actor? Yes, he did, and luckily we have a photograph oh, also no, of Pope John Paul II uh, in high school uh, dressed in a custom for a play. Mm -hmm. And as you can also see, he was a very handsome guy. Yes, so, um, he was. So he's very photogenic. Uh, we have over thousands of his photographs, and every single photograph that I've seen of him, he always looks very good, very yes. photogenic. Very friendly with the camera. Yes, very friendly. And you know, a lot of actors today, they, they need makeup and everything. Yeah, but he, he was, he was a, a natural, natural beauty. Yeah. This is another very picture that I like a lot. He's canoeing here. Oh, okay. Kayaking. It's during his and, uh, times of reflection, probably. Yes. It, this is a river in Poland. There's a story, and I, I don't have a picture of this. We don't have a picture of this. And one of the things that I heard is sometimes to create an altar when he was outdoors, he would flip his kayak over mm -hmm. to create it uh, so that he they can put the Eucharist and the chalice and everything on it. So hmm. he was able to use this outdoor element. Um, so we have a mass outdoors. So that's very creative. Wow. That's amazing. And this is uh, his room. Um, his, his room in the uh, rectory in New Negovich, I think mm -hmm. that's how you said. So this is one of the rooms that he occupied. And he was able to use. And again, when you think about a pope, or you always think about luxury, you yeah. have these nice things. Yeah, but here you yeah, see yeah. a room that is like a, anybody can be in the room. So when you look at our road trip, uh, we got it pretty good. We got yes, it. Yes, we do. <laughs> you yeah, get to see yeah. It. Um, 
you know, they're not always living in comfort and not yeah. always living in yeah. luxury. A lot of, most of the time, Pope John Paul II was traveling around the world, and then sometimes when I go back to my country and we come back home, I feel tired. Mm -hmm. And that's only one trip, two trips a year, and imagine him traveling most of his life and how I told, he took a big toll, toll on, on his health. Yeah. And yeah. He was, Which country are you from? I was born in Nicaragua. Okay. I came here hmm. in 1985 in the little war that was yeah. going on yeah. around here. Hmm. So that's, uh, was skiing. Skiing. Um, one of the things we have to see before you leave is our museum store, and that's where we have his skis and okay. some of his uh, shoes that he used when he used to go to the Alpine Mountains. Here's the last photograph that's black and white in this room, and this is in 1978 uh, before he went into the into the conclave so they can choose the next pope. And there was a photographer that asked him, who will be the next pope? And then Cardinal Tiba uh, answered, it is up to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And But right there, he looks like he's saying, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, but he doesn't say that. But he has a, yeah, a smile yeah, yeah, that's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah, his smile was probably infectious with everybody. Yes. My mother especially just, Right, whenever he she seen him on television or mm -hmm. a picture of him. I never got to see him live, but working here, I feel like he's alive. He's, he's alive. He, he yeah. doesn't feel like he's dying. Yeah. yeah. Wow, this is amazing, Louise. Thank you. So this is a um, this right here. This case has some some gift that were given to Pope John Paul II by again by different world leaders, and most of this gift depict. Um, scenes of the nativity. This was part of our Christmas exhibit and we still left him up for a little while longer. Now, is this facility uh, the biggest one for Pope John Paul II? It, it, it may be one of the biggest, biggest ones that we have. This, I think it's maybe the only one that we have with this sword that was dedicated to his legacy. To his legacy. I know there in is, the world? In the world, but I know they are working uh, well, there are a lot of schools also that are dedicated to him. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen it along the way too. Mm -hmm. like I've seen every. every uh, but uh, I know they're 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 creating one uh, in Poland at, at as well. I think as well, they're they're okay. trying to model it after our facility mm -hmm. here with some mm -hmm. of the exhibits. Mm -hmm. As we walk by, we get to see um, some more of Pope John Paul to photograph. Mm -hmm. This whole wall is already him as Pope. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we get to see again different faces of the Pope. There you see, you see him traveling, even while he was traveling, he was always studying. Oh, yes. And that's what makes me think that he was always a student of the faith. No yeah. matter how far in the hierarchy of the church you get, you never learn enough. And we never know Always all kept about his him. humility and mm -hmm. his open mindedness. Open mindedness because every day we can learn something new. That's right. And, you know, sometimes we, as human beings, we think that we know it all, especially as teenagers. And we know everything. Well, especially after uh, receiving all this affirmation, uh, it's very difficult to uh, get that kind of humility afterwards. Yes, yes. So it, it's incredible, and this shows that it was a daily maintenance problem. Yes. And, and, um, so here we get to see some more of his faces. You know, he was very devoted to Our Lady um, uh, Mary. And so a lot of the, this is a photograph that I like a lot, and this is John Paul II uh, placing the bullet on the, the, you know, the bullet that was used on his assassination attempt. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So he's placing it in the crown of Our Lady of Fatima, in Fatima, Portugal. So he attributed uh, his life, his survival to Our Lady of Fatima. That she was looking mm -hmm. after him. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Actually, I don't know if it's been recognized as a place um, officially but during my first walk mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm from Toronto Canada mm -hmm. and I was walking to Ottawa it was a 500 mile trek and midway there's a town called Mamora, Mamara mm -hmm. and it, it's still going through I think process but that's where uh, Lady of Fatima was supposed to be up here up here mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. but they're still going through but I when I was arriving I didn't know mm -hmm. of this but and it was during a very trying time mm -hmm. that uh, my walk like I was getting very uh, tired. tired and